Hi guys, this video is to bring you the viewer up to date with my uh, hobby do-it-yourself CD32 expansion project originally based on Bruce Abbott's floppy disk drive expansion project from Aminet. So you might have already seen a little sneak preview video of a parallel port working with the flashing LEDs and it'll probably be a, an unlisted video underneath this one now. Uh, but the board for that only needs 8-bit connection to the data bus, so 8 wires, and a special address decode port that I've implemented on the floppy disk drive board. The fact that the parallel port board uses the floppy disk drive interface board to decode its addresses means that it can't work independently, but the floppy disk drive interface board still can. Some logic is used at the top left hand corner of this schematic to filter a few addresses into an address decoder. We can take a closer look at read BFE001 by looking at the binary value of the hexadecimal way that we express it uh, and in combination with the logic uh, make a bit more sense of how the circuit works. Although this address decoding is rough, it's still a little dynamic. We can still see changes, for example, in bit 12, bit 8, and a few other bits, as well as the read-write status. It turns out that if we invert the address bit 8, we have a totally whole new legitimate address for the parallel port. I'm not sure if this was arranged intentionally, or it's just an artifact of the way that the CIAs decode their own addresses. In summary, it makes the parallel port board a lot easier to produce so long as I provide a few basic signals from the top PCB. I've included a PIC microcontroller that's typically included with CD32 expansions. It runs code to decode PS2 keyboards and translates them for use with the Amiga. Now it's jumping ahead of myself a little bit here because I haven't done this yet, but the address decoder on the floppy disk drive board also decodes the addresses for the extra bits that make up a Centronics parallel port, and also the flow control bits to make a proper serial port. The floppy disk drive used in the first test, uh, I haven't mentioned in this video yet because I have a legitimate authentic Amiga one on the way, which will be a Shinon disk drive. It's a, an A500 internal disk drive. Next up we want an RGB video port because when I removed the SX1 from my CD32 to do this sort of testing I lose the analog RGB video port uh, so I'm going to have to reproduce that. For a lot of this stuff I'm looking at the A1200 schematic and also the CD32 debug board schematic which are both freely available. I've buffered the composite sync signal similar to the way they do in the CD32 debug board I've used the three input AND gate. DB23 connectors with back shells are kind of reasonable on eBay at the moment, if they're ever going to be reasonable. Because these are analog signals and they're going to be thrown into the mix with a bunch of TTL logic, I'm going to shield this uh, the best I can. So it's uh, caged with brass and I've used the DB23 connector as one of the edges of the box that I made. It looks like a little three-legged crab and it can fit in between any of the two PCBs so it could be in the middle of a stack but I'm going to try to keep it on the bottom. It helped to have schematics again and a CD32 motherboard because signals can be traced straight through the expansion port through the connector to the pins on the other side of the connector eliminating some of the error that could be made at the actual CD32 card edge. The unpopulated PCB at the bottom there is for the next stage of the project and there's actually another circuit board that goes in between them but that's uh, sitting in a drawer at the moment, not getting corroded. And the monitor screenshot I showed you before was actually this. So there's RGB on the bigger monitor at the left and S-Video on the smaller monitor at the right. I've taken the opportunity to load Pinball Dreams because that will test the PS2 keyboard as well. The keys to play it are exactly the same, it's the function keys, space bar, and shift keys. Unfortunately I'm not so good at it holding a camera in one hand and a keyboard in the other. 
The timing for making this video was really to set the scene for the next stage of the project which uh, departs from Bruce Abbott's design. I'm planning to use an original A1200 Gale to implement an IDE interface for a hard drive. I have been planning something like this for a while and I've had uh, Gale and the socket for Gale for several months now. Um, I guess it just took uh, Bruce Abbott's project to, to get me started. Um, this is the IDE interface from an Amiga A1200 schematic and the compact flash adapter that I intend to eventually test with. In an A1200, Gale is also responsible for the credit card interface, which is better known as the PCMCIA interface, but I'm going to leave that one alone. Getting ahead of myself again, looking into the future, I have ordered one of these, a 68030 CPU. I plan to craft a socket for one of these out of single row female headers. And also looking into the future, I've raided my Bung uh, CD32 mainboard for its RAM. So maybe I'll look at uh, expanding the RAM. It's the thing I'm least interested in, but I had the chips here, so uh, I suppose I might as well get them off and uh, stored them in an ESD bag for future use. So if you're uh, watching this channel for the Amiga stuff, I suppose by now at least you'll know what you're in for and know whether or not to stick around. I think uh, for this series it will be Gale next up. Uh, it might not be the next video, I'm keen to finish uh, another project, but we'll see. Catch us next time.